All right. Well, welcome everybody. Mark Harbert here, and I am so excited today for this video um, because I've got somebody that uh, I have just had so much respect for for many years, and there's many things that I go and I share today. And a lot of times I'll say a mentor once told me, or I learned this from, from an amazing leader. A lot of times I'm referring to this gentleman because back in the day when I was in a network marketing company, uh, I, every week I was in California in Southern California and I would drive up from uh, Temecula. I drive up to San Bernardino every single week for this weekly training that we did. And it was this gentleman, Mr. Chris Hughes, and uh, he was the one that ran it. Now, I was not on Chris's team, but I went to these events and Chris had an amazing major impact on my life in terms of, you know, how, you know, I've had some great success in online marketing, but I really credit a lot of the way my mind shifted and philosophies on business to this guy here. So I've really wanted to do this interview for a long time. Chris, I am, I mean, for me, it's an honor to have you here. I just, I, I have the greatest, deepest respect. You've taught me so much over the years. And uh, for me, it's an honor to have you on here and talk with you. Hey, Mark. Thanks. Uh, thank you, brother. I appreciate that, man. You're very yeah. generous. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it's, it's humbling. I got to yeah. tell you, I really appreciate that. And it's, it's great to reconnect. And you know what? We both got white beards now. So for me, that's, you know. That's I, right. I feel this connection, you know. <laughs> We, we can now wear our wisdom on our face. Exactly. You know, white, <laughs> white is wisdom, man. That's what it's all about. Uh, it, uh, awesome. You know, I, I really wanted to talk about, Chris, and then one of the reasons I wanted to have you on here is because I know we've been kind of connected on Facebook for a while, and we haven't necessarily connected, but I was so excited to do this because right now, obviously, there's a lot of craziness going on. And um, one of the things that I learned really early on and a lot from you, like I said, back in the day, was the biggest thing was, is that it all depends on your perspective on how you view things. You know, a lot of people see things are crazy right now. Things are, you know, things are, are scary. They're frightening. But honestly, for those of us that have trained our minds to see opportunity, I see opportunity all over the place. And it really comes down to what you focus on. And that's one of the things that I learned greatly from you and I just wanted to, you know, kind of, you know, get your perspective on this because honestly, you know, there's, I just, I see this as a huge opportune time for us as entrepreneurs to do something great. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree wholeheartedly. And, you know, we all know the, um, the, the saying that what you focus on expands, yeah, right? Absolutely. And there's really, there's really two groups of people right now. Well, there may be more than two, but two main groups of people. One is, is the group of the masses. This is the most people, and they're focused on the pandemic. They're yeah. focused on the, oh, my gosh, the shock and awe. They're, they're, they're watching the news uh, around the clock. <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and things are getting worse for them, right? Think about it. For these people, news are fake. not getting News or fake news? We can have that debate later on. <laughs> <laughs> well, news is dead. You know, yeah, don't even get me started there. <laughs> <laughs> right. If it's mainstream news, it's fake news. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. But anyway, you know, and if if you think about that, what is really happening for those people? Those yeah. people that are that are that are, um, you know, on the the mainstream media teat, if you will. You know, it's it's their life is not getting better. Their life is getting worse. Their anxiety is going up. Their blood pressure is going up. Their yep. depression is going up. You know, like their health is going down. But then there are those, like, like you just said, um, that see the opportunity in adversity. Right. And, you know, if you think about this, a, tr a trampoline is a really interesting thing. Because, like, a, think about this. We've all been on a trampoline. And when you're going down on a trampoline, nobody gets depressed. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like nobody gets depressed because we know that to the degree that we go down, we can also go up. Right. And the thing with a, with a, with a trampoline is the, the ups and downs, um, they're immediate, right? The, the, the up following a down is immediate. But if we kind of reminded ourselves that, if we're paying attention and if we're looking for opportunity in adversity, that, that we're going to go up, right? 
you may you may be in a temporary recession. You may have lost your job. You may have, you, you know, experienced a um, a tide going out on your finances. So that we're in that point on a trampoline where we're going down, but we shouldn't be bummed out, right? Because <laughs> because if we do this right, we go right back up. But yes, opportunity is everywhere. And as a matter of fact, I was watching one of my friends on Facebook yesterday and he's kind of a promoter, right? For other businesses. Yeah. And so he's, he's in this, um, what was it? It was basically a, um, well, it's where they make custom suits. Yeah. Right. So a friend of his owns a business in LA where they make custom suits. Well, you know what they're making right now? They're making masks in hospital gowns. Total. Pivot. I mean, they shifted. Yeah, yeah, they pivoted, right? Yeah. They pivoted. And, um, and that's what's going on. And I remember, you know, you were talking about uh, offline a moment ago, the yeah. coaching program that I, that I had years back. Yeah. And in that program, I told the story about how the, you had all these kids that were making a quarter million dollars a year selling mortgages and real estate back before the Great Recession. Yeah. And then the Great Recession hit, and you know a lot of them were you know boohoo, woe is me, and they had to move back in with mama. Well, there was a small percentage of them that were like, no, pivot, right? And they yeah. went, they went from one business to the next. They went into uh, uh, um, credit repair. You know, I know some guys that went from making millions in, <laughs> you know, in the in the mortgage business, and then when that slowed down, they literally just use the same office space and the same phone numbers <laughs> to do credit repair. <laughs> hey, remember we gave you a mortgage three years ago and not the screwed? <laughs> we got the solution. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, so opportunity abounds, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but it is hard to see if you're dialed into CNN, you know, or whatever. Yeah. No, it's, it's – it, I'm telling you, like, I – if there's, you know, it's, it's funny. Um, I remember years ago and I think it was you that would say that, but I honestly, I don't remember. I just, I remember this saying in my head that your mind is like a computer, put crap in, you get crap out. You put bad data right. in, you get bad data out, you know? And that's, that's really what it comes down to. And I know that, you know, if we constantly fill our heads, especially with the news, and, and I'm talking about that now because People are at home and most people just have the news playing in the background and they don't realize this crap is going subconsciously in the back of your head and it's just filling it. You may not even know what you're putting in your head, but eventually that stuff's got to make its way out. And it's so important to what we're putting in because what we put in is going to, going to come out at some point, you know? And it, yeah, absolutely. And you know, the scary thing about that, Mark, is that we, perception is reality. Yeah. And you know, if, if you, if we, let's just say people are dialed into, you know, we're creating a theme now here, I guess, with the news, but if people are dialed in all day, yeah. that skews their perspective. Absolutely. And so what happens is, as they turn away from the news and they start to look out into the real world, they're, they're only able to see what is validated by the news. Right. You know what I mean? It's, it's like that confirmation bias or the reticular activating system, you know, that, that kind of mutes all of the good stuff that's going on in the world because in, in most people's mind's eye, there isn't anything good going on right now. Oh my gosh, everything is terrible. And so when they look in the real world, they're like, yep, look at that, another business closing down. Yep, look at that, you know, like a for sale sign on that house. And it's like, no, you missed all the good stuff, you know? Like the other day, I was in Florida as remember you and I were talking about that I was in Florida for a few days and I grabbed a chair and I was with a friend and we put this chair out on this kind of a communal lawn in the middle of a big neighborhood. And, um, within a few minutes, a father comes out with four, I don't know if they were all his sons, but four boys and it's the middle of the day and they're playing football, yep. you know, and, and, to me, that's what I see is it's like, what a blessing that we have an opportunity to reset. But right now, you know what, like we all have a book we want to write. We should be yeah. writing that book 
Yeah. You know, we all have a business we want to start from home. We should be starting that business. There's so much opportunity right now. And we've got, for those people that have jobs that aren't working right now, it's like, <laughs> what are we doing? Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> this, is, this is money time. Yeah, yeah, I saw somebody post it the other day, like, hey, you've been wanting to get out of that job for the longest time, so you'd have time to build your business. Now, now you got it. What are you doing? <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, but, you know, it's a reality check, I think, for a lot of us. Because, yeah. I mean, I remember you and I have, you know, background in network marketing. And you hear so often, you hear people say, um, man, if I could just quit my job, you know, I could really focus on my business, just like yeah. what you're saying. And then what you find out is when they, when they quit their job or they're forced to not work because of COVID-19, yeah. they're not building their business. <laughs> nope. Well, I always tell people, like, you, you want to get away from that boss, but guess what? As soon as you quit, you still got a boss. It's yourself. And are you going to hold right. yourself accountable, you know? Because it, it takes discipline still, you know, the, the difference. And it's not to say a job is bad, but it's like, you know, usually at a job, you've got a very structured environment. You have a very specific job you're supposed to do and um, you do it. And a lot of times people do it without thinking, but the second they step out of that into something, now they're the ones that are responsible and, you know, no money's coming in unless you're producing something, you know, and yeah. so it's a totally different yeah. thing. And that's probably had a shift, you know, of uh, reality for people too during this time, you know, so. Yeah, for it, sure. So. You know, I, um, I, just something I've been thinking about and, you know, I, I don't want to come, come on here and chat with you and pretend that I've got, uh, I've got the world by the tail. You know, <laughs> I, I don't watch, I don't watch the news, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> right. like that's not the case. Like I'm, I, I am someone until recently, until the last maybe year and a half, we don't need to get into why, but like, I never watched the news. Yeah. I didn't, I, I mean, I literally cut the cable didn't have news didn't watch it so i do i do check in to some um some citizen journalists yeah you know like i i watch some stuff on youtube but i'll tell you this there's two ways that that i can start my morning and and i hope that we can all learn from this yeah you know i can start my morning by grabbing my phone you know first thing and see what's going on on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or whatever. And, and there are mornings when I do that, yeah. you know, and then there are also mornings when I get up, I take a deep breath. I drink that glass of water that I put next to my bed before I went to sleep last night, you know, the night before big exhale. And I get into the energy and the vibration of gratitude, yeah. you know, and just this extreme gratitude. And then I, I've got home pods all around my house, you know, and so I say, um, hey, Siri, play Jim Rohn. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. yeah. Or, you know, lately I've been listening to uh, Earl Nightingale. Oh, uh, yeah. Leave the classic. Field. I'm like, hey, yes, classic. Hey, Siri, play, play Earl Nightingale. Or, or even I, I got back into Dennis Waitley, you know, the psychology yeah. of, of winning. Play Dennis Waitley. And if you compare your days, you know, those two scenarios, getting up and just getting on your phone, just even we justify it because we're, we're entrepreneurs, right? So we yeah. justify it. It's like, well, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta check my email. You know, I, yeah. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta <laughs> see, see if I got any, anything in my inbox on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and it's like, no, because you're setting your frequency yeah. and your vibration for the whole day and, yeah. and, and, and for much longer than the day, you know, because days string together into weeks, etc. But yeah, just a little tip. I mean, that's something that I have really observed. Is how you like, start wow. the day is everything, man. I mean, how you start the day is everything, you know, it's like, it really, it really yeah. makes a big difference. I mean, you know, I, and you know, my wife and I, we've been married now for boy, 17 years. And there's one thing we've learned. 17. Yeah, I know. Right. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> And we, we've kind of learned that, you know, when we wake up, you know, how we are with each other determines how the rest of the day goes. So we've really learned to like, you know, really, uh, you know, be super positive in the morning. It really makes for a great day starting that way. And I'm not a morning person. I'm like one of those guys. It takes me an hour or two before I wake up, really. Same. And, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing, you know. And I think one of the 
you know, one of the things that uh, I know I always enjoyed when, um, when I was, you know, coming to the, the systems trainings and things that we used to do, you know, in San Bernardino, one of the things that I loved the most was really, you know, I think really getting into the mechanics of how the mind works, you know, and really it helped me to evaluate. I mean, I, the first time I ever learned about the subconscious mind was at a training with you. I like, I had no idea, you know, what it was and why it was so important to what, you know, how we think. And uh, I started realizing the little things, you know, that I was doing that were kind of pre-programming me to, to, you know, set myself up for failure. And I think one of them, you know, I remember there was a book that I had gotten at one of those trainings. And if you it was five major pieces to the life puzzle by Jim Rohn. Yeah. One of my favorite books, man. Yeah. One of my favorite yeah. books. And that was what really opened me up to the idea of, you know, how to be successful. And uh, it's, it's been just this amazing journey, you know, to, to go on. And you've been, and, and what I, okay, so I got to tell this story real quick. And Chris is going to laugh because this is, this is, you know, so funny is I think Chris, you're a great example of somebody who has really, you know, made something of yourself because what money people don't know is Chris has actually been a star on the cop show. <laughs> oh, that is funny, man. Yeah. True you know, story. Yes. Bad boys, bad boys. And uh, when I first saw that, because I had had, you know, I'd always like, you know, would come to the, the training and I always be like, man, Chris is great. And then when I saw the cops thing, I was like, dude, this guy is just like, you know, <laughs> it's like, he gives me hope, <laughs> you know, but, uh, oh, that's that hilarious. An interesting story. Why don't you talk about that for a second? That's just kind of a funny side note, you know? Yeah. Well, it was, uh, wow. 1990, when was that? that was 1992. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I was in high school for six years, so I had three senior years. I was, I was, I went to high school from. I think that's why we connected so well because I had two senior years. So that's probably. Did you really? Yeah, I did. Totally. Oh man, that's funny. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So I went to high school from 1986 to 1992. I was a senior in 1990, 1991, and 1992. I graduated, and yeah, so I, I was actually leaving church early with a couple of my buddies. <laughs> and one of my friends was notorious for taking stuff out of my bedroom, you know, like I, I would be missing stuff and I'd see it in his house, yeah. you know, a week or two later. Well, I had this little uh, BB gun that looked like a nine millimeter. <laughs> and I mean, it was made out of metal. It looked, yeah. it looked legit like a nine millimeter. Yeah. Well, it was on my dresser in my room. One day it was gone. So I called my buddy, his name's Rick. And I said, Hey man, where's my, where's my gun? I know you took it. You know, you're always taking stuff out of my house. Yeah. He's like, ah, I don't have it. I don't have it. Well, anyway, months go by and uh, I'm in the car with Rick. Rick's driving. We had just left church. I'm in the passenger side <laughs> and uh, our buddy Jeff is in the back seat. Well, he, we almost get in an accident. He slams on the brakes and, and something hits me on my, on my foot, you know, it slid out from underneath the passenger side of the seat. And I look down and it's my BB gun in Rick's car. <laughs> so I was like, dude, you are a lion sack. You know, and I stake that, take that gun. I stuck it to his head. And Oh man. Yeah. My buddy Jeff is like, he's looking around. There's this lady right behind it. She's like, oh, oh, this lady's freaking out. And I think he was even messing around with her, you know, saying help, help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we pull up to Rick's house. We walk inside and greet his mom, who's in there. Oh, and then we realize we left we left our our clothes in the back of the trunk of his car because we were going to change clothes and go to a Ranger game and uh, Texas Rangers. So we walk back outside to go get our clothes out of the trunk. Man, the cops were up and down the street, and they got cameras. Know, guns. <laughs> oh yeah, the cameras rolling, <laughs> guns drawn. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! <laughs> So I think it's public if people search uh, Chris Hughes on cops. Oh yeah, I'm gonna find <laughs> on it on Facebook. This video is going on my blog, and this vid that video is going right behind, right below it. So you guys will be able to check it right below. <laughs> oh, it's so funny, man! I had these glasses that took up three quarters of my face. And... So epic, man! 
So I, mean, yeah, I think, I think what, you know, when I found that out and I saw that and, you know, being around a lot of entrepreneurs and seeing the success that you had and, and uh, seeing that just made it more real and realize that, man, I, what the biggest thing that I learned was your past doesn't equal your future. You know, that's right. I mean, I mean, just that's what right. happened yesterday doesn't determine what's going to happen today. You know, that's and, right. And I think, you know, with what we with what everybody's kind of experiencing right now, that's more true than ever before. And I think it's uh, such a good time, reminder, you know, and um, it's uh, we all we all get fixated on destination and overlook direction. Yeah. Right. It's like our destination. If your goal is to make six figures or seven figures that's a destination that could be that could be far away you know who knows how long that could take but we can shift direction in a moment you know we we could go from checking our phone first thing in the morning to getting into the energy and vibration of gratitude and listening to something positive and motivational that's a shift in direction and that's something that could be done just like you said from yesterday to today and what you'll find is and Mark, you've been around a lot of successful people yeah. and are successful in your own right. And, you know, what you find is these are normal people. These are, they're all, and, and some of them have a uh, checkered past, you know, yeah. like they didn't, they didn't make all the best decisions and they didn't, maybe they dropped out of high school or they dropped out of college and they made some mistakes early on. Yeah. And, um, you know, and I think that's important for people that are on the lower rungs of the ladder of climbing yeah. up is to know that these are not special people. Yeah. You know, these are ordinary people. Here's what makes them extraordinary is their desire to, to, to not be normal. Yeah. You know, their desire to be somebody, to make a contribution to the world, to create wealth and freedom, et yeah. cetera, et cetera. But in, in most instances, that's the only thing that is extraordinary about them. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, one of those things that I learned in those trainings and it was, you guys just drilled it into our heads was the 10 core commitments. And the one that just yes. always stuck with me was be here a year from now. <laughs> yes, I've been saying that yeah. like every year for like the last, you know, 15 years, be here. A year from now. <laughs> Boy, I keep being here a year from now, man. And like, you know, it just keeps going and going and going. And oh, uh, I, I love it, but you know, it, it really is. And I think that, uh, you know, we, I think we just all have to, because I know people are watching this too. And there's people out there like, you know, when is my business going to start taking off? When's it going to happen? If I could tell you all the conventions that I went to sitting up in the nosebleeds, you know, I remember going to the convention and being there were 20,000 people there. And I was literally the second row from the top, looking down at the wow. people on the stage and just thinking to myself, you know, um, man, when's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? And it, you know, for those who are building an online business or you're doing affiliate marketing, or whatever, a lot of times you see a lot of the big online marketers and you may think the same thing. When's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? But all I remember was just keep saying, be here a year from now, be here a year from now, stick with it. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. And that's like the message that I have for people today. Cause we live in a super, you know, you see it, I'm sure in this, I want it now mentality. And uh, for those that are willing to like stick in there and just, you know, hey, this is a, you can't plant a seed and expect it to grow overnight. You know, it's going to take yeah, some time absolutely. and some cultivation. So, and the thing, you know, the thing is, and that's absolutely right. You know, how, how can we have success in anything if we're not here a year from now? Yeah. Um, you know, and, and on the backside of that commitment, you know, be here a year from now is be better a year from now yeah. while you're still here. You know? like, 100%. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, what's uh, I, I mentioned my mentor, Bill Bailey, he's deceased yeah. now, but I used to talk about him a lot back in those trainings. And he, he once said to me, he said, Chris, if anybody ever tries to pull rank on you because they're <laughs> older than you, yeah. you know, he said, if they don't have what you want, if they don't have the life, the health, the romance, the spirituality and all that, that you, that you want, don't let them pull rank, you know? And he goes, if he, I said, well, what do you mean by that? He goes, well, for example, if somebody says, you know, listen to me, young man, you know, I've got 20 years experience on you. He said, if they don't have the life you want, you just simply say to them, you know what? You don't have 20 years. Ex- With all due respect, right, right. You, you, you have one year repeated 20 times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. That's it, man. But it's, 
it is. It's a commitment of being here a year from now, but also being better next year than you were um, the year before. You know, it's interesting. One of the one of my highlights is I I spoke at the um, at a chiropractic um, organization in Northern Colorado, and there are you know in the room doctors that are making a million dollars a year. Oh yeah. And I, I'm college dropout, you know, and I'm the speaker. <laughs> <laughs> and it's such a beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a beautiful, humbling thing. But, you know, here's what's interesting is the average chiropractor. Now, think about all the they're doctors, right? Yeah. They, they go to school for all those years. The average chiropractor in America today is making somewhere between sixty-five dollars and $75,000 a year. Wow. Just think about that. Yeah, that's insane. Seriously? People think, oh, doctors, they're, yes, yes. Oh People think, God. oh, they're doctors, they're rich. And it's like, no, that's not true. And it's not true in virtually every career, you know, in network marketing, you know, in, in, in professional sales, in internet marketing, in, in, you know, book publishing. I mean, I've written several books. It's like, it is just because you have the title, just because you have the square foot, the square footage, just because you have the business, you have the accolades from something that you've done in the past, like none of that matters. And that's, that was kind of my core message when I was speaking to those chiropractors, but it doesn't matter who I'm speaking to. You know, yeah. I can, right now I'm speaking to your audience and yeah. it's the exa exact same message. Yeah. Your life, your income, your business, your time off, your happiness will get better when you get better. Yeah. You know, if you, if you don't want to be an average chiropractor, if you don't want to be an, an average internet marketer, you do what you've done, Mark. And what I've done is work, as Jim Rohn always said, work harder on yourself yeah. than you do on your business. Everybody, you know, hey, Mark, what's the secret, man? What's the secret? You know, what's the secret to getting leads? You know, yeah. what's the secret to, to Facebook advertising? Yeah. And it's like, no, what makes Mark successful is not just his specific knowledge on internet marketing and lead acquisition. It's your attitude it's your philosophy it's your background and personal development i mean man i remember those years when we were when you know as you said the systems training in the yeah. san bernardino hilton hotel I know, every man. thursday every thursday night it wasn't like a shady uh, part of town too man <laughs> <laughs> you should see it that whole place is they've upgraded it now, well, have they now not? That we're gone yeah <laughs> right <laughs> but but you know you were one of the best most committed people in the room you know a hardcore student and if people are looking for secrets right now, if they're looking for, if they're feeling stuck, man, I'm telling you, it, it's, it's not just the Google algorithms. You know what I mean? It is your mindset. People right now, it doesn't matter if Google shifts, you pivot with Google. You know, it doesn't matter if Facebook shifts, you, right? But what happens is the people, there are some people that luck into the money. You yeah. know what I mean? They learn a strategy or something from a mentor, maybe they paid a coach or they took a coaching program and it's like, oh wow, it's really working for me. Um, and they're making money. But what we find is, is that your income will not long outpace your level of personal development. Yep. So even if you had a lucky bump and you came into the money because of a strategy, yep. because of a technique, if you have not done the work on your mindset, and things change in the world and now your income is in the toilet, yep. you also are in the toilet, yeah. right? And, and, and most people don't survive that. You've seen them, you've seen them. Yeah. They're like in it to win 100%. it, they're making money and then there's a shift somewhere and they fall into the toilet and they can't get out. It's because yeah. they didn't do the work on their mind. Yep, no, it did 100%, man. Like it is so right on the money because I've seen people come just in you know the internet marketing space where they come in I've seen people come in, make six figures a year later, they're nowhere to be found. You know, oh, it's not because, weird. Because an algorithm shifted, you know, right. And there's yeah. one thing that I've learned in this, just in general is like always shore up your fundamentals, like the fundamentals yeah. of the way, you know, you think success, you know, about success, the way you approach your business is I look, I can teach you Facebook ads all day long, but if I don't teach you this, if you don't get this right, I can teach all the strategy in the world and it ain't going to matter. It's not going to matter a bit because yep. you don't have it here to back up that strategy. And it applies with no matter what you're doing. 
It applies in network marketing. If you walk up to somebody and you begin to talk to them and they even sense for a moment that you have hesitation or they can smell it, you're, you're, you're done, you know? And yep. it, it applies literally to everything. And, uh, you know, I'm just super grateful to have gone through so many of those trainings where you, know, you guys literally just drilled into us. And I, you know, I really took it to heart because back then, this is around like 2007, 2008, I was working a corporate sales job. So rather than listening to the radio, I had my, my iPod, my classic iPod full of Jim Rohn and Dennis Waitley and, and uh, all these guys. And man, I drive up and down, you know, driving up to the high desert, to Palm Desert for hours on end, at, you know, listening to these guys for literally two years straight. That right there had the most profound impact on my mind, but I would have never done that had I had not had people like yourself pouring into me saying, you need to do this, you need to do that. Because I'm telling you, I used to be the shyest guy in the world. Shyest guy in the world. You would have never got me up on a stage in front of a thousand people. Now, it doesn't bother me one bit. I've done it several times. Uh. I've done it many <laughs> times. I'll get up there and train, but I could not have done that 10, 12 years ago. I would have been like, heck no. <laughs> no way. You know? Oh, man. I love that. I love it. Well, and, and in many respects, I've, you know, kind of watched it happen. I remembered, you know, yeah. meeting you, you know, all those years ago and then watching it change. I mean, you saw me change and I saw you change and, yeah. you know, it's, it's what happens as you, as you focus on, um, on betterment. You know, I, I, this has been on my heart. I want to share something with your audience, yeah. if that's all right. Absolutely. Probably get to the end of it. So you mentioned the five major pieces of the life, the life's puzzle. Yeah. And I've made a study of that, but you know, it's Jim Rohn and I encourage everybody that listening to get everything Jim Rohn has ever done. Gotcha. Um, he never made a bad product or never wrote a bad book, but um, you know, I studied that for many years and then I, I have kind of um, tweaked it a little bit. And I, today when I teach, I call it the belief pyramid. Mm. And, um, and I want to share this quickly with, with everybody. It's, I won't draw it out so they won't get the pyramid part of it, but it's basically, you know, at the very top of the pyramid is lifestyle. And that's, and that's, that's the goal is we all want the lifestyle. We want health and wealth and romance and spirituality and travel and, you know, connection and all, all of that. We want all of those things. And as I do my seminars, you know, across the world, I, I always ask people the question, like, how many of you have the ultimate lifestyle, you know, in all the areas of life? And there's almost never a hand that goes up. And when a hand does go up, I, I want to, you know, say something about, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I want to be like, wrong. <laughs> you are not a specimen of health. I can tell from here. You know? <laughs> like, so it's like, so nobody has, not myself included, right? My, you know, my hand is never up, obviously. Um, you know, I'm giving seminars not only to help people, achieve their goals, but I'm giving seminars because I'm not where I want to be yet. Right. It's so, so it's like, so that's number one is the, the, the um, lifestyle. Well, Jim Rohn always taught that success is a refined study of the obvious. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have the lifestyle that we want, I think the obvious question or the obvious thing to do is to ask the question, why not? And when we ask the question, why am I, and this goes into Jim Rohn's teachings, but why am I not living the lifestyle? And the answer is because you're not getting the results. Yeah. You're not getting the results that you want in your health life, financial life, spiritual life, uh, uh, relational life. Well, now the question becomes, why am I not getting the results? And the answer is simply because you're not taking the actions. Yeah. If you are taking all the proper actions in all the proper amounts uh, consistently over the long term, you know, you're, you're going to get the right results. And with the right results, you get the lifestyle. So again, the obvious question is, why am I not taking the actions? Right. You know, and think about this. I ask audiences all the time. How many of you know, how many of you do things every day that you know you should never do? All right. right. And all of our hands go up, right? Yeah. And how many of you don't do things daily that you know for a fact that if you would do them, it would change your life? Yeah. <laughs> you know, all the hands go up, yeah. right? 
And it's like, what is wrong with us? And I love that video. There's a video on YouTube of a dog on the couch with a bone in his mouth. Yeah. And he starts, tr he starts trying to get the bone with his back foot, with his rear foot. And, it, and the closer his foot gets to the bone, he starts growling, right? You know, his own and, foot. <laughs> it's his own foot, you know. And then, and then, the, then his back foot goes away, and then it comes up again. It starts getting closer to the bone, and he's like, Arr! and then he like starts biting his own foot, you know. And I love to show that video in seminars, and people, we all laugh, right? Everybody laughs, and I go, look, that's a fun video, isn't it? And we all watch that video, and we go, oh, that dog's cray cray, you know, that dog's crazy. Like, what's the matter with that dog? But then I get, you know, I sober all of us in the room and I, and I deliver the, the punchline. And the punchline is, look, we can all laugh, but that dog is you yeah. and that dog is me because we, we do things every day to thwart our own success. Even if success is in our mouth, even if we already have it, right? We do things to self-sabotage, to sink ourselves. So anyway, so that's the, why is it that we take those actions that are wrong and why is it that we don't take the actions that are right? right and that comes down to the next layer in the pyramid and that's your belief or your philosophy your mindset and that's it, it's like you know we have these negative beliefs like if you want something done right you got to do it yourself yeah. you know it's a man it's a man's world uh you can't teach an old dog new tricks rich people are evil you know it's, we have all of these weird things that you know, money don't grow on trees and all this stuff that, that is just weird. So uh, the question is, how did we get those beliefs? Because those beliefs are affecting our actions, our results and our lifestyle. And the answer is what I, what, what I call the three E's and that's the, that's the foundation of the pyramid, yeah. the three E's and, and the three E's are education, experience and environment. Yeah. And that's where we got our beliefs. We got all of our beliefs from our education, our experiences, and our environments. So the million dollar question is, how do I change these beliefs that are preventing me from doing the actions, which is limiting my, my results and my lifestyle? And the answer is three E's. The three E's. We, we yeah. need the three E's. We've got to get a new, new educations and new environments and new experiences. And as we do that, now we begin to rewire the mind. That's awesome. You know, you talked about the power of the subconscious mind. We are getting new beliefs. Um, and, and like right now, this, when people think education, they think uh, school, right? They think college. This is a different kind of education. We're right now, people are holed up. They're not able to go to seminars, you know, so they're doing a lot of Zoom calls, right? Yep. So this is, a, this is a new environment for people. This is a new experience. So that's just what I would say, you know, and, and that's where my mind has been over these last couple of days is I'm like, man, I need to really hunker down right now in this time on those three E's. Um, and, it, and it's, and it's like Tony Robbins says, it's, it's can I C A N I yep. it's constant and never ending improvement. And, and that's really where our focus needs to be. Anyway, I wanted to share that with everybody that's because awesome. what, yeah, you know, what everybody's going for is the lifestyle and the results yep. Like, man, I just want to get to 10 grand a month, you know, man, I just yep. want to get to 83,000 a month, you know? And it's like, that's the wrong part of the pyramid to be focusing on. We got to go to the foundation yeah. and, you know, which is those three E's, which makes everything above uh you know that's better awesome. so i anyway. love that i love that tweak you made to it man can you guys see everybody who's watching this video why i absolutely love chris like uh, <laughs> man i thanks, just brother you know for me that you, you know i just again i i i can't come back and say it enough man so appreciative of you and everything that you've you've uh you pour out there because it's stuff like this that makes all the difference man like that foundation those three e's that's just the perfect explanation of what it all comes down to. You know, what do you put in your head is really education. Like, what are you That's listening right. to? You know, um, I, you know, it's a whole nother topic, but we don't even need to talk about how our education system has failed everybody. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> talk about that. For sure, you know, <laughs> definitely don't get me started on that. <laughs> I know, you know, uh, you know, we can talk about our environment. Really. Those are the kind of people we hang out with, you know, and uh, that's one thing, you know, I know for myself, 
and I know you do too, is getting around the people that pick you up. The people that will look you in the eye and say, you know what, you're thinking really small. You know, you need to think bigger than that. And uh, people that love you enough that aren't going to, you know, and you got, I think the biggest thing is too, is learning to, uh, to listen. You know, some of my best mentors throughout, obviously you've been a great mentor to me, but I've had other coaches that looked me in the face and chewed me out and said, you're thinking way too small. And you're, you're, yeah. you're, you know, I could have very easily got offended by that, but instead I chose to say, you know what? He's right. I am thinking small. And uh, I need to move beyond that. You know, I need to, I need to think bigger and the greatest mentors in my life. Now, you know, I never had that with you. You never got in my face and you know, but you, know, you, you were kind of, <laughs> I can. yeah, I know if you want, I can, man. <laughs> no, but you know what? My style. You want to know who was kind of one of my, my great mentors, my, <laughs> my drill and my, my company commander in Navy boot camp. That wow, dude yeah. me out like constantly. And, but at the end, <laughs> But I'm telling you, when I graduated boot camp and he came up and he said to my parents, Mark has got a lot of leadership ability and he's, been, he's one of our best that we've had in this thing. Oh. Holy cow, man. I get goosebumps thinking about it. Oh, man, me too. Wow. The way he chewed me out, you'd have thought, man, you suck, Mark. <laughs> you absolutely wow. suck. But, you know, when a mentor sees something in you, they refuse to let you, you know, really, uh, um, you know, think small. And uh, that's a great reminder. Yeah, absolutely. Great reminder. Tough love. Yeah. Well, Chris, let's wrap it up. I want to talk, you have a, a podcast, man. Uh, I definitely want to shoot people over to your podcast because uh, you guys need to learn what Chris shares. That's for sure. Hey, I appreciate it. And yeah, unfortunately right now, I just, as I was sharing with you offline, I got an email from, uh, from Apple. There was something wrong in, in the description. And so they pulled it. It's off the shelf, but it should be back up in a couple of days. Yeah. Uh, but it's called uh, the Above Ground Railroad, and you can just Google that, and it'll take you to my website, yeah. uh, Above Ground Railroad, and it's a freedom-focused personal development podcast, and so it's built on uh, what I call the seven pillars of uncommon freedom, yeah. and uh, the quickly, the first of those is, is uh, mind freedom. You know, just like what we're talking about, right? Liberating the mind, first and foremost. So mind freedom, time freedom, money freedom, health freedom, spiritual freedom, emotional freedom, and the ultimate freedom, in my mind, in my assessment, is unconditional love. Yeah. You know, getting to that point where we literally are, um, not that we have, but we are yeah. unconditional love. And there's a big difference between having unconditional love being un and, and, and you know being unconditional love so it's a labor of love uh yeah. it's not a business uh you know podcast it's just something that will help everybody anywhere in any area of life and uh yeah invite people to go and take a look and also for those i was getting ready to do a shameless plug when you were talking about <laughs> education yeah um you know i would encourage people to go to my podcast and even if it's not up right now just go to above ground uh, railroad dot info or google it you'll go to my website but go to, um, I'm not sure what number it is. It's one of the first five, six, seven episodes, but it's the history of, of, of public school. Oh, and um, yeah, yeah it might, might make you mad. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, <laughs> I, let's do it, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know, I know you know, Mark, but yeah. I'm saying to your listeners yeah. you know, yeah. and your audience. <laughs> so, hey, I appreciate yeah. it, man. This has been really fun yeah. and uh, let's, let's do it again. I'll, I'll have to have you on my, on my podcast and, talk yeah. about what you do, you know, under, uh, under time freedom and, and money freedom. And absolutely. would love great. to. And, uh, just want to encourage everybody watching this, you know, go, go check out Chris's uh, podcast, listen to him. Uh, he'll pour into you. I mean, Chris, back in the day, I don't know if you remember, we used to do one minute mentoring. Dude, I listened to all 52 of those things. You had one. Every <laughs> week. <laughs> oh man. You remember those? That's awesome. I, I remember all these little things, man. But uh, absolutely. It's very cool, man. Yeah, I love it. Stuff. So brother, I appreciate you, man. Love you so much. And gr grateful, grateful, grateful for uh, uh, all the stuff you've shared over the years. And uh, if you guys enjoy this video, make sure you comment, get over, check out his podcast and uh, we'll do this again for sure. I appreciate it, Mark. It's been fun, man. All right, Chris. See you, buddy. All right.